Welcome back to Justice League Dark, right here at Comic Storian. This is where we take your favorite comic book storylines within the comic books, and we tell you what happened within them in a dramatic fashion, like an audio book. I'm Benny, I'm your narrator, and I'm here to help you know more about those characters that you enjoyed in the movies and the video games, and of course, your comic books. Today, we're gonna to be covering Justice League Dark, Lords of Order. Now to catch you up real quick, in the Justice League Dark storyline that started up in DC Rebirth, Wonder Woman decided to battle against a being known as the Other Kind, and she assembled the magical beings of the DC Universe. Those individuals were Constantine, Swamp Thing, Zatanna, Detective Chimp, Man Bat. Now, they went on a couple of different adventures and even battled against Cersei and the witches and a bunch of other things, but during this time, Dr. Fate was worried about the other kind crossing into our world and destroying magic. Now, Naboo is in the helmet of Dr. Fate, and Naboo is a very powerful individual and needs magic to work or he's finally going to be killed. So he took over Dr. Fate's body to basically kill everyone and stop the other kind from coming over. Basically, Dr. Fate's gone evil. It's not actually Dr. Fate, it is Naboo in the helmet, but we'll be calling him Dr. Fate throughout the rest of the story. In the very last issue, Swamp Thing and Constantine and Phantom Stranger tried to stop Dr. Fate, but they failed. And Swamp Thing arrived to tell them that Constantine has fallen. Now in the lighthouse off the coast of Maine, Wonder Woman begins to fend off a group of demons, stating that this is not pleasant work, sister. Zatanna scans through her magical tome, telling her, Yeah, but you make it look so easy. That damned wizard sure didn't make this. Wait, this should do the trick. Abenegzor, wrath and gas, demons of eons past, here before me stand you now, all the powers me endow. Just as Zatanna opens up her mouth, the spirits of three demons are sucked in and she closes the grimoire, stating, It worked. The demons three are down. Wonder Woman asks if she's alright. She just took their power into herself. Doesn't that worry her just a little bit? Zatanna begins to walk away, telling her that she is terrified about so many things right now. This is very firmly on the bottom of that list. Besides, you could use a little bit of hellfire right now. Let's go. As the two climb the stairs, Zatanna says that she sees him. Felix Faust, but he's a little indisposed at the moment. Over in the corner of the destroyed room, Felix sits alone in a state of confusion, drooling from the mouth. Wonder Woman sheaths her sword, stating that one of the other kind must have gotten here first. And Zatanna looks at the scribbles on the parchment papers, telling her, yeah, it's that damn sanity-eating furball we encountered in Arkham. We do not have time for this. Lup Roy Ndiyam Jutziat. As Zatanna casts her spell, Felix begins to stand up and scream in pain as his mind is stitching itself back together. Zatanna tells him that magic is dying. The other kind are eating it alive. Her father sent her Sargon's Ruby of Life from the other place. He's been tortured by these things for years. They need to find someone who can use it properly and they need to find him. They're going to find Mordru. As agony spreads throughout Felix's body, he mutters, m m Midnight. And meanwhile, over in the Oblivion Bar, Bobo the Detective Chimp yells at the packed pub telling everyone to just calm the hell down! You'll be served when you're served! Tracy says that it wasn't her idea to fill up this place with refugees from the entire magical community. Bobo sighs, asking, Did you think it was mine? Man Bat is sitting in the Hall of Justice, going nuttier by the minute. Wonder Woman and Zatanna are off solving some great magical mystery, forgetting who the actual detective is. It's just, this place hasn't been like this since the Dark Multiverse invasion. Since Jim. Tracy pats Bobo, telling him that he's doing a good thing. Jim would be proud. They will be here until the gates to the Plains of Limbo open up and just then. Jason Blood walks through the crowd, stating that he's afraid Limbo is no longer an option. The talks between heaven and hell have fallen through. The death of the first of the fallen has angel and demon alike terrified. Bobo hands Jason Blood a glass, telling him that whenever he comes in, it's never good news. Jason takes the drink, telling him that he hears Neuron is making a play for absolute control in hell. And if he succeeds, he may be able to make a deal with him. But that will take time that they do not have. As it stands, both parties have closed their gates to Earth. But soon, the small Swamp Thing saplings, helping Sir, form together, and Swamp Thing grabs Jason, telling him, That is unacceptable! Jason's eyes begin to burn as he says, Gone, gone, the form of man, rise the demon Etrigan! As Swamp Thing and Etrigan get ready to fight, Bobo shouts, asking, Can we keep the fireworks to a minimum? Some of us are trying to run a business here. Meanwhile, over in Hell's Kitchen in New York City, Zatanna leads Wonder Woman down a dark alley, and Wonder Woman asks if this is the place. 
Zatano tells her yes, a club for members of the supernatural community. Spent a week here performing when her father was... Oh. As Wonder Woman pushes open the doors, the stench of death fills her lungs as Zatanna quietly says, God! A wounded man comes out of the shadows, stating, No, it was no god that did this. Zatanna yells, Papa Midnight! And Midnight says that it was them who let these horrifying creatures into their universe. Wonder Woman looks away, stating that she is sorry for his loss, but there is no other way to stop the witch goddess Hecate. Midnight scoffs, telling her, it must be exhausting for the cape and tights, for the amount of time you spend apologizing. But to answer the question of what happened here, well, we were attacked by the other kind. What else can I do for you? Zatanna says that they are looking for Mordru, but Midnight tells her that he will say the same thing that he told her father when he went looking for Mordru. Turn back. Zatanna asks, her father was looking for him? And Midnight says, yeah, he found him here in this very bar. Whenever Mordru would show up, it would always end up messy, since you can't really tell a being that powerful what to do or not to do. Last I heard, Mordru was going to spend some time with the Cold Flame. Hopefully that gives them what they're looking for. But before you go, is it true that John Constantine has been taken out of the equation? Satana tells him, yes, it's true. Back at the bar sits the Swamp Thing with Etrigan and a few drinks, stating that they need to figure out something, somewhere they can go and hide out. Mirror would be out of the question because it might not be possible for that place to support the power that is in the bar right now. But just then, Tracy drops her tray, stating that Bobo should come quick. And through the door, the upside down man hangs. How cozy! Do you mind if we join you? We've had a busy day, eating all your friends and family, we other kind! Bobo yells for everyone to get out the back. He'll open up a portal. And as the other kind begin to flood into the bar, Bobo swings the Sword of Night, opening up the path to Mira. And once everyone is through, he says that he thinks they're safe. A voice then tells him, No, Bobo. Everyone quickly looks back to see Nabu along with the others, telling him, I'm afraid that it has only begun. Bobo quickly shields his eyes from the light, asking, Who the hell are these guys? And Jason says, Though they have never transcended physical form before recorded history, I'd recognize them anywhere. They're the Lords of Order. You'll recognize the Helm of Nabu, but that was merely one of their artifacts. The Gauntlets of Mirath, the Cloak of Sira, the Breastplate of Hoku, and the Boots of Palfil. Each of them has taken a host of great power, as Nabu has taken Kent Nelson. Bobo asks, That's bad, right? And Jason Blood tells him, Yes, it is very bad. Bobo steps forward holding up his sword, Hey, Fate! You're out of bounds here! I got the Sword of Night! That makes me the Nightmaster of Mira, and you are not welcome, and neither are your weird-looking friends. Nabu looks down, stating, Magic breeds chaos. The chimpanzee is the perfect example of this. The other kind are a purifying fire, an unwitting weapon whose actions play out our grand design. Jason then walks forward, telling him, You are under the impression that you have the greatest powers of magic, that there is no one left capable of facing you. Well, you have not met Etrigan. God gone the form of man, rise the demon Etrigan. As Jason transforms, Nabu easily shields himself, stating, We are the one who taught Merlin. We wrote the first books of magic. And when it is time to choose our hosts, we only pick the finest. Madame Xanadu, Ibis the Invincible, Gregorio de la Vega, once known as Extrano, and Mark Merlin, Prince of Ramon. Nabu then tells Sister Symmetry and Brother Pattern to handle this. The two rush out and each grab one of Etrigan's arms and they begin to pull. Etrigan screams out in pain as Jason is separated from Etrigan and the two fall to the ground. Etrigan looks at Jason telling him, With Neron's call, to hell I'm beckoned. I can't remain another second. Jason scrambles to try and grab hold of him, but before he can, Etrigan is pulled down to hell. Nabu asks Jason, Do you feel your age? It should be catching up quite quickly now. But before they can go, the Blue Devil storms in with his army asking, What on earth is going on here? He sees Bobo and Nabu, and he looks up telling Nabu, It's good to see you. I was hoping to actually talk with you about rebinding the Sword of Night, and... Blue Devil trails off as he sees Jason rapidly aging. And he asks, does he look older? Oh man, I missed something important, didn't I? And Bobo tells him, yeah, you did. Blue Devil then asks, Dr. Fate's one of the bad guys now, huh? And Bobo tells him, yep. So Blue Devil sighs. Oh, we're all going to die and somehow this is Bobo's fault. Bobo tells him, you got that right. Uh, sorry about that, Dan. 
But before they can continue their banter, Blue Devil tells Bobo to use the sword and get them back to the castle. As a pillar of blue light strikes down and everyone disappears, Nabu says, The distractions have removed themselves. Shall we begin? Meanwhile, over at the island of Aia, Wonder Woman kneels down stating, I know you are here. You have to be. Please, sister, answer my call. And Cersei leans back while sitting on a rock, asking, No unicorns this time. Well, come. The end of the world is happening. Let us have a drink. As the two enter, Zatanna says that they do not have time for drinks, and Cersei says that she could freeze temporal reality for a bit. Great way to catch up on some reading, too. But really, Diana admitted you missed the power of a god coursing through your veins, right? It must sting terribly to have lost the one weapon that seemed to have worked. Wonder Woman ignores the comment, stating that they have searched everywhere. Every hidden world, every hidden place, but they were unable to find him. Cersei swirls her hand in her cauldron, stating, Oh, I know! The Lord of Chaos himself. You want more Drew. Zatanna pulls out the Ruby of Life, stating that Papa Midnight pointed them towards the Cult of the Cold Flame, but the other kind got to him first. It is said that her father met with her and more Drew years ago, and they learned the true nature of the other kind. But there is a greater story here. The fact that every step that they take feels ordained. Magic is being violently murdered. And they want to know who. But before Cersei can answer, there's a rumbling in the cave and Wonder Woman asks, what was that? And Cersei laughs. The beginning of the end. There's not much time. It's all going according to my father's plan. Back on Mira, everyone steps out of the portal with a giant onk symbol appearing in the sky. Swamp Thing tells everyone to get back and the two figures start to walk out of it stating, ah, oh, wonderful, we found them. Man Bat steps out and with him a young man and Blue Devil asks, who is he? My name is Khaled Nasur. I was Dr. Fate once. A pupil of Kent Nelson and Naboo before Naboo went down this dark road. Bobo begins to stare at Khaled. And he asks, Weren't you, like, stuck in a vase? Aren't we already in enough trouble? Swamp Thing looks at Bobo and tells him, It might not be wise to speak. And Blue Devil says the same thing. You know, that's a damn fine idea, Swamp Thing. Blue Devil then begins to call out his armies as they begin preparations to defend the castle. But Khaled says that he's sorry. But if they act fast, they might be able to save the sphere of the gods as a whole. But Mira? Mira is already dead. As everyone sits down, Bobo says that he still thinks it's a bad idea letting Man Bat learn magic, but no, nobody listens to him. Swamp Thing asks Khaled, You spoke to the Lords of Order. They were destroying Mira? Khaled tells him yes and every world like it. First will be the outer realm, such as Gem World and Ra Realm, but eventually they will march on heaven and hell. Bobo says, there has to be a way for us to fight back if the other kind were to find us. Khaled says that the other kind won't eat the reality away from beneath their feet, but the Lord of Order will. Blue Devil then leads his armies to prepare, but as everyone leaves, Bobo looks at the Sword of Night, stating that he was supposed to protect this realm. Jim left it to him, he can't let it happen. Swamp Thing kneels down, stating that Jim Rook would not want to lose this magical realm and his friend in one blow, but right now he can't win this fight. They can't win this fight. Back with Zatanna, she asks, what did she mean by her father's plan? That he knew of the other kind? That they would come? And even now, that they need more Drew? Cersei sighs, asking Wonder Woman if she could please just for this moment. Wonder Woman hands her her lasso, telling her only this once, and Cersei explains that her father, Giovanni Zatara, saw this path laying out before him and he prepared for it. He sought counsel from the Lord of Chaos, Amordru, to learn the truth of the origins of magic. This set everything into motion. This is the reason that they must seek Mordru. Along on that adventure, he brought along another man that he met, John Constantine, and upon hearing his name, Zatanna says that she has to step away. She goes outside, falling to her knees before raising the earth around her. She tries to catch her breath from releasing all of that magic, but as she does, something begins to form behind her. An other kind creature takes form, telling her, Flasho, Flasho. Wonder Woman and Cersei rush out as Cersei says that she'll handle this, but Zatanna tells her no. She needs to let off some steam. Her magic might not hurt it, but it can hurt the world around it. And as she casts her spell, the ground lifts up, encasing itself around the creature. The creature tries to move, but as it lays trapped, Zatanna says that she needs to find Mordru and the answers that he gave her father, and she needs to find him now. 
Cersei says that the truth is Mordru has been waiting for them. Go home, he will find you. Wonder Woman tells Zatanna to wait, but before she could stop her, Zatanna casts another spell, teleporting the two of them away. But as Cersei walks back to her cave, the Upside Down Man appears, stating that she is playing a dangerous game. Cersei tells him that if he is here to frighten her, then he must not have learned anything. He can't touch her as long as she bears the witch mark. Soon they will get what they deserve, the Amazons and the rest of them, and they will learn the meaning of suffering, as will he. The Upside Down Man laughs as he disappears, telling her, I look forward to it. Back at Mira, Blue Devil gives his orders when suddenly Symmetry appears before them, stating that they have an offer. They are all brave enough to fight against the Lords of Order. They honor that, which is why they will allow everyone's safe passage back as long as they strip everyone of their magic. All knowledge, all memories, all of it. Those who agree will have a mortal life, free of the dangers of the other kind and the Lord's business here. Those who don't, you will die. You have five minutes to decide. And as Symmetry disappears, Swamp Thing asks if they can really do that. And Khaled says, yes, they can. Man Bat then asks, what can they do? And Khaled tells him at this point, they really only have one answer, and that is to run. So later at the Hall of Justice, Wonder Woman and Zatanna walk through as the Flash plays his welcome intro. Wonder Woman says that Cersei couldn't have meant that Mordru would be here, right? What are they even looking for? Zatanna then asks, how long have they served drinks at the Hall of Justice? Wonder Woman asks, what? Never. Superman wouldn't even allow ale served in the private cafeteria. Why? Satana motions to the old-fashioned tavern in the middle of the Hall of Justice, stating that that is probably what they're looking for. As the two walk in, Wonder Woman asks if she's telling her that one of the most powerful dark magicians in existence has just been sitting in the Hall of Justice drinking beer. Morger then laughs. laughs. What of? Please, you do me a disservice. Join me. Zatanna tells him no, but as Mordru waves his hand, both Zatanna and Wonder Woman are forcibly brought to their chairs and bound. And Mordru says, you misunderstand, that was not a request. Now let us each get a drink, and then we will start explaining why I shouldn't kill you where you sit. Over in Core, the blue pillar of light appears, and Bobo tells everyone that they need to make it quick. Khaled says that he has read about the people in Merlin's biography, the Homo Magi. They were taught at the Rock of Eternity. They were the people who built Atlantis. They took magic and they spread it over the world. And while everyone sits down to try and come up with a plan, one of Blue Devil's soldiers, Roderick, asks where will they go? Blue Devil tells him that they will find a place. Isn't that right, Bobo? And Bobo says, yeah, as a member of the Justice League, I can talk to a few countries, put together some land. Hell, we'll even get television. Blue Devil stands back up, placing his hands on Roderick's shoulders, telling him that they will get through this. They will. But before he could continue, Roderick's skin begins to burn away, as many of the people of Mira begin to burn from the inside out. Blue Devil tries to grab a hold of a young girl, shouting, Stop! They are people! You can't just do this! And Symmetry tells him, Yes, we can. Nabu and Symmetry float down with Nabu stating, Mira is gone. Its people were a part of its fabric. Fictional beings, now they are nothing, as they should be. Pluto grabs his axe, shouting, I will kill you! But Nabu holds his hand out, telling him, No, you will not! As gold light washes over Blue Devil, his body begins to stiffen as he turns to stone. Bobo looks at him, telling him, No, we have to get out of this place, everyone! But as Bobo swings the sword, nothing happens. He asks, What's wrong? And Khaled says that the Sword of Night was tied to Mira, and with Mira destroyed, it is nothing more than a sword now. Nabu says that their five minutes are up, and Symmetry asks, What is your choice? Swamp Thing begins to state, We will never. But Jason stops him, telling him, We choose to live. Everyone stops, and Bobo says, Wait, what? Back at the tavern, Mordru looks at the Ruby of Life, stating that this is a curious object. This may, in fact, be the first magical artifact. We saw the life of Hecate before we set the other kind on her to devour her. We saw the Lords of Order. We saw him. What you may not know is that it was my job to watch over Hecate once she was captured. My job was to convince her to give up all of her power to them so that they could make a better use of it. The Lords of Order taught themselves these noble bastions of moral justice. But I was the Dark Hand. 
The pain I inflicted on her night after night, it was unspeakable. What order could arise from that? Wonder Woman says that he is a disgusting man. And Mordrew drinks his ale, stating, Yes, I am disgusting. I am a foul thing, and I always have been. I have killed millions by my own hand. I am a plague upon this world that has been around for thousands of years, and I will still continue to be here after you've all become dust. He looks at Wonder Woman and asks, Do you hate me? I can taste it. You don't even have to say it. Zatanna yells to stop, but Mordrew waves his hand, telling her, Silence! And suddenly her mouth and nose are sealed. Mordrew looks back at Wonder Woman, asking, Do you know the difference between chaos and order? Wonder Woman doesn't answer, and Mordrew slaps her. He goes on, That is chaos. Magic is dangerous. We all know that. We are trying to use our own imaginations to rewrite reality itself. Magic of order, with its spells and pentagrams and books. It asks the universe politely. Chaos is a little different. There's no spells, there's no sigils. It does not ask the universe. Chaos takes what it wants. And when the universe recoils in horror, it directs the energy right back against us. Wonder Woman struggles, stating that he claims to know the threats they face, but he will survive them. If he is so desperate to show off to a few young women how powerful he is, why not face them? Why not destroy them? And Mordrew glares back at her. Because I don't want to. Do not mistake me for an ally. I am Mordrew, the Lord of Chaos, the only true Lord of Chaos. Mordrew then picks up the Ruby of Life, stating, And I am not amused by this twisted moral desire to run to death. That's your help. Enough power to get the job done. Enough power to rip the universe in half. And with that, I take my leave of you. And don't come looking for me again. Next time, you won't live. I don't care who you are. As everything suddenly vanishes, Zatanna coughs as she breathes, stating that she shouldn't have started this journey. She should have never tried looking for, but Wonder Woman tells her, Now, this has been hard on all of us. We have taken the orderly path so far, and it's left us close to ruin, with all of the magic on the verge of death. As Wonder Woman picks up the Ruby of Life, there is a bright purple light that transforms her and Zatanna. And she says, Perhaps it's time we broke the damn rules, sister. Back at the Temple of Kor, a magic user is stripped of his powers, and Symmetry says that he is free. Join the world with no memory of what you have lost. Next. Kalid steps forward, stating, Do it. It'll be nice to be able to forget how disappointed I am right now, believing in all the lies. Naboo tells him that they were not lies. You served the order well. You should stand with us. Khaled looks away, stating, no, just do it and be done with it. Over on the side, Bobo says, I can't believe this. Why would you want this, Jason? And Jason asks, why would I want people to live? This gives them a chance to flee and hide. And Swamp Thing then says, they will evade death a few moments longer than the rest. And Jason nods, stating yes. But just then there's a rumble and it begins to rain. And Bobo holds out his hand, noticing that the rain is not rain, but blood. Khaled shouts at Nobu, asking, Aren't you going to do it? Erase my memory. And Nabu stops, stating, There is something wrong. Just then a bolt of lightning strikes with a loud crackoon. Wonder Woman and Zatanna step out of the smoldering crater with Wonder Woman yelling, Nabu, we would have a word with you. Nabu asks, what have you done? What dark magic have you embraced? Zatanna steps forward stating that she has served the magic of order since she was a child, but deep down it never set right. You want to strip away all of the magic and create order. That is a coward's path. We can win. We can win by embracing the full horror and power of imagination untethered by poultry laws. You want to stop us? Try. As the other members of the Lords of Order appear, they say that she is mistaken. The two of them cannot face the five of them. Wonder Woman laughs, stating that they should count. Meet the new Lords of Order. And as the lightning strikes again, Man Bat, Swamp Thing, and Bobo all radiate with the power of chaos. Soon the fighting begins, and with every swing that the Lords of Order throw at them, the Lords of Chaos are able to push them back. Man Bat says that he can see it, the magic underneath everything. It's beautiful. What was I supposed to do? Satana begins ripping reality, telling them to break it, break it, break it all! 
Boba lunges at Symmetry, shouting, You killed him! You killed all of them! My sword can cut through magic. It is because I decided it. This is for Mira! Down below, Khaled tells Naboo that he needs to stop this. He will be bound here away from the battle. He is afraid because he doesn't know how to win, so he will lose on his own terms. That is not right. Naboo holds out his arm, telling him, You will die. But a voice screams out no, and Kent Nelson begins to pull off the helmet. And Naboo tells him, You cannot fight, Mr. Nelson. John Constantine then appears, telling him, Yeah, he's not going to. And the Phantom Stranger tells him, None of you will. As Naboo struggles to try and keep the three of them locked away, Jason asks Zatanna if she needs help. He can take the Hellfire in her. The Demons Three. Zatanna then says, give them hell, and she releases the demons from her body and into Jason's blood. He stands up young once again and says, gone, gone, the ravages of age with the demons three. Let's show them rage. Together with the demons three, he begins to rip the helmet off of Nabu, freeing those trapped within the Dr. Fate helmet. And the other lords begin to step through a portal, stating that they must regroup. They will leave Nabu to reap what he has sown. Symmetry flies towards them, asking for them to wait, but Bobo leaps down, slamming his sword through her cloak, stating that he just cut her magic off from the source. It is done! Naboo flies up with just his helmet, asking, Do you think that I'm not as powerful without a host, that I require anything? Kent calls out that they're going to do a little spell and bind his power within the helmet so that he cannot use it without another's help. Lock him away good this time. Naboo yells, No! And Zatanna charges up, stating, Yes, I can see it. And as the mages focus their power, she grabs a hold of the helmet, and soon a large pillar of light appears. Soon the helmet drops to the ground with a clatter. And Kent tells Zatanna that she must fix what she's done. She needs to believe in a better way to shape the chaos into something more ordered. Mold reality with a focused mind. John tells her that this is everything her father ever wanted for her. And she tells him, Yes. That is why she cannot be the one. She has doubted too much. She doesn't know if she can be that person. But who among them is capable of wielding this might? Khaled smiles, stating, That much wonder, even. And everyone looks at everyone, stating, Oh. As all of the magic users gather, Wonder Woman calls out, Beings of magic, hear me. Hear me everywhere that this power can reach. I am Diana of Themyscira. I am Wonder Woman, and for far too long I have ignored the horror that your community's protectors have allowed. The old rules allowed a great darkness to emerge. Those you counted on to keep you safe from harm try to feed you that darkness. I am here to protect you. We are here to protect you. Believe in us. Believe in a brighter path of magic that will lead us out of the dark. We are the Justice League of the Dark and we will protect you. And that concludes a rather massive storyline within the Justice League Dark, the Lords of Order. Dr. Fate going evil but turning good again, John Constantine brought back from, I guess, the dead? And an official declaration of the Justice League Dark. I hope you guys enjoyed this storyline up to this point, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get the next chapter in the Justice League Dark storyline where they're going to be fighting the other kind. Hit this video with a like, and I'll see you next time, right here.